Thank you for beginning the season of Lent with us and joining us for this Ash Wednesday service. Today, we prepare ourselves for our 40-day journey to Jerusalem, to Holy Week, and to Easter. We take in the ancient proclamation that we are dust, and to dust we will return. We recollect the breath and dust of the earth by which God made us. We imagine the dusty paths of the Galilee on which the disciples walked beside Jesus, God in the flesh. And in the next 40 days, we try to align our footsteps as best we can with the God who is still walking right there beside us in the everyday and the ordinary. So as we continue in this worship, engaging scripture and prayer and music, we take stock of our mortality our beloved embodiment. And at the end of the service, I am going to invite you to write a word or a phrase that has emerged in this time of quiet contemplation. It can be an intention or simply a word you are feeling, noticing, and want to hold as you walk through Lent. So for those watching at home, you can pause the video now if you want to go and grab um, some paper and a pen, or you can wait until the end to do so. So making space for the imperfect, making space for mending and restoration, making space for the God who dwells among us in the dust. Let us continue now in this time of worship. A reading from Isaiah chapter 58, verses one through 12. Shout it aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen, only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and not turn away from your own flesh and blood then your hope will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and the Lord will say, Here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your hope will rise in despair and your night will blend with noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins 
and will raise up age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. May God grant us wisdom and understanding to those passages. As we gather on this special time, this special day that leads us forward, we pause for our prayer of confession. I invite you to pull out paper and pen, type it, whatever you need to do, and sit quietly. Reflect on some of the ways that you have misstepped through the year. I will write down the ways I've missed the opportunity to love. As we do so, remember that we are not to beat ourselves up, but to acknowledge there are ways that we've missed the mark of love and that we are beloved children of God. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We are in God's heart and we are God's creation. So know that even as we sin, we are wonderfully and uniquely created in the image of God and worthy to be loved. May the collection of these ideas, this mixture of life, the tension that we hold, be our prayer this evening. Amen. In Isaiah, we see that true fasting is not really so much about depriving ourselves of nourishment, of pleasure, of the things which bring us joy and fulfillment, but true fasting is more of an orientation or a reorientation to where we are finding nourishment. Isaiah suggests that God desires for us to find nourishment in relationship, in giving to others, in turning toward one another, in a posture of generosity and curiosity and kindness. So while we might be used to thinking of this season as entering into a posture of repentance in which we turn away from certain things, I invite you also to see this season as a way in which we turn toward things and ways in which we pay attention to what God is asking us to see and embrace. I invite you to pay attention to the connections the relationships, the spaces you might open and enter in your own life where there is room for mending, restoration, and healing. So now, guided by the God who calls us to love what is mortal, we consider now the idea of ashes as a mark of this calling and of God's eternal love for each of us. Holding this idea, I invite you to mark your forehead or the back of your hand as you do so, speaking the, or speaking the words, remember that you are God's dust, and to God's beloved dust you will return. Now in just a moment, as this video ends, I invite you to take that piece of paper and pen or pencil and write down that word or phrase that has emerged or is still emerging, something you want to carry with special intention through this season of Lent. So as we prepare to leave this sacred virtual space and return to the many sacred places of our lives, may we carry the fullness of love by which we have received God's blessing, and may we become visible signs to one another of Christ's healing, restoration, and mending. Go in peace.